In this video, we're gonna be breaking down exactly how you can manage your inventory and restocks as an Amazon seller. And so I know this is far from the prettiest topics you'll see out there on YouTube, but this is very fundamental and very important if you wanna differentiate your business, especially if you wanna reach that six, seven, maybe even eight figure goal on Amazon. Restocking, getting into the boring stuff is very important. And so if you're brand new to the channel, my name's Warner Fields with Fields of Profit. I'm a full-time seven figure Amazon seller. And we're gonna go ahead and break down my exact strategies for making sure that I don't let any opportunities slip through the cracks because as an Amazon seller, there's gonna be a ton of data for you to look at. So we're gonna be breaking down how to make sure you're not letting those opportunities slip through. And real quick, before we jump into that, I wanna say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, which is actually Sellerboard. It's the tool that I personally use to manage my restocking. The tool will go ahead and break down here later in this video. But I did just wanna say a quick thank you to Sellerboard for sponsoring this video and building the tool that's gonna help us be more efficient as Amazon sellers. So we're gonna jump into the computer and get into the nitty gritty here in just a second. And first off, I wanna say something to stress the importance of why you need to be staying in stock on your products as much as possible, staying on top of that data, right? So on Amazon, all sales are decided by the buy box or most of them. Some listings will have no buy box, but the vast majority of the time, sales are gonna come through the buy box on Amazon. Usually the biggest ways to win the buy box are with price and being the fastest to ship. So usually that's gonna be if your price is somewhere closest to the cheapest and you're an FBA seller. So you get that prime badge, you get that two day shipping. Usually that's going to be the majority of how you're winning the buy box. But there's a lot of smaller factors that go into winning the buy box and staying in stock on an item is actually one of those factors that plays a pretty decent role. And so the longer you're able to stay in stock on a product, the more Amazon is going to trust your store as someone that is a trustworthy seller of that item. When customers are consistently not having issues, Amazon is going to start recommending you to be that buy box seller more than other sellers on that listing. And the only thing that would be different is that you've been selling on that listing longer and you've had no stock issues, meaning you've been able to stay in stock plenty of time. So if you pay attention to the methods we're going to break down, you may actually start seeing higher sales on your listings just as a result of being in stock more. And another thing I want to say is that as Amazon sellers, a lot of times we're not actually even selling products, right? Sometimes you might have to think about the product if it's Christmas lights, for example, and it's January, probably not a great product idea, right? But most of the time when you're buying products, you're just buying good data, right? And so you're buying product data. You know, last time I bought that item, we made a profit. The price still looks to be the same. The seasonality still looks to be the same. Boom, fire it. And then from there, you just purchase, buy more inventory, right? And as you're scaling on Amazon, having really good handle on your data is extremely important because you'll get to the point as an Amazon seller, and especially if you're a wholesale, maybe arbitrage seller, you'll get to the point where you're able to get through all of that inventory that you needed to buy for the month. Let's say you're setting a certain goal to buy in inventory. A lot of times you're going to be able to actually burn through that goal on inventory just with stuff you've already bought in the past, just on your product restocks. And that's where arbitrage and wholesale starts to get really, really fun is when you kind of front load the work and then you just let your restocking processes take care of the business from there. Obviously, you should always be adding new products because stuff's going to fall away. But using tools like Sellerboard and just go in and having a good handle on the data is going to allow you to be a much better Amazon seller just by not having to waste time and go find new opportunities when you might have those good opportunities just sitting in your vault waiting for you. And so with that in mind, let's go ahead and start talking about how you're going to actually be able to stay on top of your restocking data. And so I don't know about you, but if you are a beginner Amazon seller, I know when I was a beginner Amazon seller, even a little bit intermediate, my restocking processes were not very refined. And I was just going to Seller Central. I was pulling up the orders tab within Seller Central. And so you can see right, right here, the last 90 days, we've had over 10,000 orders. So we can go ahead and look through here. And obviously nowadays, it's not so efficient to look through here and just pay attention to what's selling. But in the early days of my Amazon business, that's what I was doing. And that's all I had. And you know, it, it is what it is. It's probably not going to be very scalable long term, right? And so I was just jumping into the orders tab of my Amazon account. If you have, you know, three, four, maybe five different ASINs that you're selling just a couple different products, you could probably make do for now, right? Just going through here, looking at the orders tab, going in and anything you start to see selling really quickly, check the ASIN, make sure you've got enough stock for the next 30 days, all that kind of stuff. The other thing to think about as you're looking through, you can see all, you know, a bunch of orders on your Amazon seller central would be that a lot of these items aren't necessarily profitable anymore, right? You know, if you're a perfect Amazon seller, awesome. They're all still profitable, but there's a good shot that some of those items are not going to still be profitable. And even right here, I can see some items that are not still profitable for me and I wouldn't really want to be reselling anymore. And you know, obviously there's going to be some items that I want to buy a ton more of. In the early days of selling on Amazon, I was able to just look through, see what was selling recently, see how much stock I had left, kind of compare, right? But that's also not keeping in mind how much profit I'm still making on that product. So especially once you get to the point where you've got a couple different ASINs you need to manage, it's all going to add up very quickly. And especially in the early days, 
is if you're an arbitrage seller, you're probably gonna have a lot of different products and it might be difficult to manage and see which of those products you actually wanna sell again and which of them you know you don't wanna sell again. And I know in the early days, I let a lot of products slip through the cracks just because I was only looking at the orders tab of my Amazon account, grabbing the ACE and seeing how much I still had left. Another thing that I know people like to rely on is this tool right here, the restock inventory panel on Seller Central. There's also a restock inventory report within Seller Central, but Amazon is incentivized to make more sales, right? And so Amazon doesn't care about your margins. And that's one thing that is a harsh reality of selling on Amazon is that Amazon wants you to sell more stuff on their platform, even if it's break even, they still make their fees, right? And so a lot of times on these restocking reports, number one, they're obviously not considering your profitability. And number two, they're going to be pulling some crazy numbers out of nowhere. Sometimes it'll tell you to restock an insane amount. So for example, in the last 30 days, we've sold about 11 units of this product. It says we've got two days of supply left because we have one thing left. It wants us to buy 20 more. That seems pretty reasonable. But then also on the restock inventory report on Amazon, you also get numbers like this. So this is an item that we have sold one, you know, they sold a little bit slower than we were expecting to. We sold all the way out. We're probably not going to want to restock it, but Amazon's telling us to restock 21, even though we've only sold six of these in the last 30 days. And this was a relatively slow seller for us. And so Amazon does not always have your best interest in mind. And that's where I like to use third party softwares like Sellerboard to help me manage my restocking. So I actually did a whole breakdown of Sellerboard showing a lot of the basics. So you can check that video after this one if you're interested in learning more about this tool as well. But for this specific video, I'm gonna go ahead and look more at the planner tab of Sellerboard. And so this is the tab that I use a lot within my own Amazon business and helps me have a much better idea of what's actually been selling in my business. And so when I go in here and filter by days of stock left, I start to see a lot of those products that I you know, have completely sold out of. The red ones especially will be ones that we've sold out of recently. And this is just a little demo account as well. So another thing you can take advantage Advantage of within seller board is using like purchase orders and that kind of stuff they've been rolling out so you can see this one for example you can mark that you have already ordered 1500 and it's on the way so it's not going to start interfering with a lot of this data just something that's really cool and so as we're going through here we're able to see products like especially like this one right here where we only have six days of stock left well, you know we have 21 units in stock so we can even jump in here and see you know how much of this am I selling every day seller board also calculates the you know the estimated sales velocity so this is a rough estimate of how many units you would sell per day that you're actually in stock. That's another thing that a lot of restocking tools or Amazon themselves don't think about is how many sales you're actually making per day that you're in stock. Not necessarily the last, you know, the last 30 days where maybe you were only in stock for a week of that. You wouldn't run a restock based on that. You'd want to restock based on how fast that you're going to sell per day that you're actually in stock. So on an item like this, it looks like we're about, we're expected to sell a little bit over four units per day. And that sales per day metric is also something that's configurable, which I think is really cool. And so you can go in here and actually assign different weighting to each different period. So this is, you know, going higher level like you're talking about, right? So, you know, maybe you care more so about how fast it's selling in the last seven days. You can weight that more for calculating how many units you expect to actually be selling every day. And so let's say it's a seasonal product. You might want to weight those recent days a little bit heavier. You know, let's say you're selling sunblock in May. You might be wanting to, you know, boost that up a little bit because sunblock probably wasn't selling very quickly over the last 180 days if you're selling sunblock, right? So you might assign a little bit of a heavier weighting to those more recent sales. That's just one kind of example I can think of off the top of my head. But really, I just like being able to configure that and being able to have it estimate how much I'm going to sell per day that I'm actually in stock is super awesome. Another thing that I'll try to get in here and use Sellerboard to do is go ahead and filter by recommended quantity for reordering. So right here, we can see that, oh, you've got 30 days of stock left. Looks like you're going to sell about one a day, a little bit more. And right now you have 34 in stock. So you can see those sales coming on and it looks like there might even be a little bit of uptick in sales here recently as well. So you could jump in here and based on those recent sales, based on the fact that we're selling a little bit more recently, Sellerboard actually goes ahead and calculates what you might actually want to go ahead and restock. Now, obviously, I'd always recommend going ahead and, you know, putting a little bit of human input into this, making sure that this number makes sense for you to reorder. But this number right here actually helps my lead virtual assistant who he basically decides how much we're going to buy of each new product that we are going to buy. And this number helps him understand how much that we should be reordering on a restock a lot, right? And so especially if you're wanting to build teams down the line, having data like this, having things that are doing the math for you. So it's not all just based on what you're doing in the back of the head. You're able to put people in those positions easier with data like this. We're able to see, oh, I might want to reorder, you know, about 100, jump into the, the stock. And so especially on something like this, I would probably jump in and just look at a couple days where see what the sales actually looked like. You know, does that 100 unit order actually make sense? In this case, if I want to be in stock for, you know, 60 to 90 days, it probably does make sense. On an arbitrage level, I usually restock for about 30 days. On the demo account here, they're accounting for more days that they want in stock because these are private label sellers. So you want to be in stock a little bit longer. 
And so specifically for a lot of you arbitrage sellers, I want to go ahead and jump into the back end of my actual Amazon account here and show you a couple examples and maybe how much I would restock on a couple of these products. And I've also gone ahead and filtered by ROI, which is another reason why, you know, restocking with Amazon doesn't 100% make sense once you start to scale because our obviously ROI data is very important. You know, I don't want to restock a product that I'm not still making a profit on and seller board helps me kind of rule out those products that I might not still be making a profit on. So let's go ahead and look into this product right here that looks like it's suggesting that I reorder about 14 units of this product. It's saying that we're going to make a 92% ROI on this product if we reorder it right now. And so based on that, you know, I see that 14. Awesome. Maybe I do want to go ahead and check out ordering 14 units of it. So before I do that, like I said, I always want to do a little bit of human input on a lot of this. And so usually I'll just click this FBA, FBM stock button. And we can see that this is something I was selling way back in the day. Looks like it took me a little bit to sell it, but it wasn't too big of an issue. Seems like it's still profitable too, according to seller board. And so before I go ahead and pull that final trigger, before I were to restock an item like this, looks like I haven't sold this item in a while. I think this is actually like a sunblock type item. So it makes sense that we weren't sourcing it too much to sell in in November. Although when we look back and we see when it was selling, it looks like it was selling, you know, somewhere close to one to two sales per day. And so in my mind, if I was doing this manually and I have to go back and look at all the items myself, you know, I'd probably buy, you know, 20 to 30 units of this. Seller board's probably wanting us to be a little bit more cautious because, you know, we haven't sold it in a while, that kind of thing. And it's also still a little bit cold. So maybe this sun type product might not be the fastest seller, right? And so being able to jump in there and having seller board, you know, suggesting, hey, you should think about buying more of this item. Even in this case, I would probably, based on that data, I'd probably buy a little bit more. Seems like it was doing pretty decent back when we were selling that product. So I'd probably buy a little bit more than 14, maybe 20 to 30, based on the fact that we were selling one to two a day. But we can still see right away, that was one product. I actually wasn't aware of this product. I had completely forgotten about this product. And I might actually go buy some more right now, just because we're jumping into the back end of seller board, you know, filtering by those products that are still profitable, and then just jumping into the data there. And so on the flip side of that, you'll also have products like this in your Amazon business, where it looks like we still have about 13 units of this. We're only selling about 0.23 units a day. And it's saying, hey, you, you know, you've got 57 days left of stock of this item. Right, same story here. We've only got five units of it. It's going to take us another, you know, few months to sell out of this. I could probably lower my price and actually make those sales. But those are the types of items that you don't want to really be looking at at all. And especially if you're, you know, just looking at your ASINs randomly, trying to look through those orders tabs, those are going to be the types of items that you might waste time trying to see, you know, do I need to restock this? You know, if you're using a tool like this, you're going to be able to save the time and not have to actually go out and look through all that data. It's going to say, hey, nope, you're good. You've got 160 days worth. Keep scrolling, look for stuff that's going to be a little bit higher priority for you. And so that planner tab there is definitely where I spend the most of my time using seller board. It's definitely worth it to me and my business. They're also rolling out some extra stuff. They're even rolling out the ability to list products via FBM before too long, which is going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to that. But especially if you're a wholesale seller, where we're looking at the inventory planner back there, and you know, you're thinking about all the different products you want to manage. And let's say you ordered a thousand units of something new, you wouldn't want to forget that you had ordered those units, you know, have somebody else on your team order those units, you know, you order it again, completely forgetting about it. And so that's where the purchase order orders tab of seller board comes into play. As I'm doing more and more wholesale for my business, I'm definitely gonna be taking advantage of this because you can actually go in here and create a new purchase order. You can just press add and then you can go in here and pick, you know, any product that you've already sold is gonna be in here. And you can plug in an ace and all that good stuff. And so let's say you, you know, are ordering this right here. You might go ahead and say, all right, I, I'm ordering 500 units of this. You can get really fancy with all this kind of stuff. Seller board also helps with a lot of bookkeeping and stuff that we're not gonna break down in this video. But just for this, you know, when we're talking about restocking, you go in here, say, hey, I ordered 500 units of this, throw it onto that purchase order there. And then when you go actually go ahead and go back into the planner and create this batch. So I went ahead and entered in some test data here. Let's say you went ahead and placed this order here. You could go ahead and just save this data, go ahead and throw it in there. And then back on the planners tab of seller board, it's going to remember the fact that you've already ordered 500 units. And so as you're going in and placing new orders for new things, seller board is going to eliminate that. It's going to say, Hey, you don't need to reorder this. You already reordered 500. So that's going to factor into the planner tab over here. So there's lots of other stuff that I didn't get the chance to show off there, but if you're interested in checking out Sellerboard, they actually went in and hooked us up with a two month free trial of Sellerboard, which is crazy. If you use the link down below, you get two months for free. So go ahead and check it out. Start staying on top of your restocking data with seller board. And then before we officially end things here, I want to answer a couple of the super common questions I hear about restocking. And so first off, one thing I hear all the time is how much should I actually restock? And so as we were talking about, I usually restock for about 30 days of inventory for my business, but there's going to be some extra concessions, you know, seasonality. We talked about that a little bit when we we're looking at the tool there. You know, if you expect that sunblock type item and we're going into, you know, summer or spring, probably going to be selling a little bit faster. And so you might add a little bit to your quantities based on that. So, you know, 
know, in the last 30 days in the winter, maybe you sold 10 units of sunblock. Obviously, you're going to be selling a little bit faster as you're moving into spring. And so one thing you can do to really figure out what that bump might be is just diving into the Keepa charts, seeing how much faster items really are selling during with that seasonality, just kind of keeping that in mind as you grow. Another thing to keep in mind as you're restocking this inventory, especially the profitable inventory, is to think about how long that price might be around, right? And so with arbitrage, with wholesale, the name of the game is to have the lowest prices. And when we're talking about arbitrage, especially, you might not see that same coupon plus a cash back plus a discounted gift card combo for two, three months later, right? And so in those cases, you might also want to buy a little bit more than that suggested 30 days of inventory. On the flip side of that, if you think you might have some negative seasonality affecting you, probably cut down your buy quantities a little bit. If you think that item was really easy to source, maybe it was from a super easy to find wholesale distributor or is just at walmart.com at retail price just sitting there, you might want to bump down how much you were expecting to buy on that as well. Because with those coupon items, we're thinking about how long am I going to have the lowest cost possible, right? If you're buying at retail price from Walmart, the chances that you have the lowest cost on the listing are very, very slim. And the chances that someone else is going to come in, lower the price a little bit on you because you bought from Walmart at retail price are higher than if you were that guy who bought with a bunch of coupons, right? So as you're going through restocking, just think about a lot of, you know, those outside influences that could affect, you know, you know, are the prices going to drop a little bit? Do I expect the prices to rise? Should I buy even more expecting the item to do well? And a lot of that, unfortunately, I can't give you a magic bullet for. It's going to come down to putting in the reps and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, and really the one thing I want to make sure you take home from this video is to be organized with your data, be organized with your systems. And especially if you already sell on Amazon, make sure you have a tool like Sellerboard to go in and monitor all that. So you're not letting profit slip through the cracks. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and got a ton of value out of it. If you did, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and add some value back to my business. If you guys have any questions, comments, anything like that, feel free to drop those down below as well. But I really appreciate you guys watching and I will see you next time. Thank you.